is Marley. She is a three-year-old spayed female Chihuahua Dachshund mix. She suffers from Hansen type 1 intervertebral disc disease. Hansen type 1 intervertebral disc disease is compression and concussion of the spinal cord due to the degeneration and eventual swelling and rupture of the intervertebral discs. At the junction between the vertebral bodies, there are cushions called intervertebral discs, which give flexibility to the spine. These discs are composed of an outer fibrous ring, the annulus fibrosus, and an inner nucleus pulposus. The spinal cord lies in the intervertebral canal, which runs above the intervertebral discs. The nucleus pulposus can degenerate over time and suddenly rupture, pushing upward through the thinnest part of the annulus fibrosus and eventually calcifying. This can put a lot of pressure on the spinal cord and it becomes compressed since it is confined within the bony canal of the vertebrae. This can lead to back or neck pain, unstable gait, partial or complete paralysis, incontinence, and loss of pain perception. So what exactly causes IVDD? Recent studies have shown that this disease is actually genetic in origin. Studies have linked IVDD to retrogene insertions of the fibroblast growth factor gene FGF4 on chromosome 12. FGF4 is a gene that plays an important role in bone growth and development in dogs. Normally, there is only one copy of this gene in the chromosome. However, breeds that are predisposed to IVDD will often have a mutation caused by transcription and splicing of the FGF4 gene into mRNA, reverse transcription back into DNA, and reinsertion into another part of the genome. This results in a shortened intronless copy of the original FGF4 gene in the new DNA strand. This new gene is called a retrogene, and the result of this transposition is that these high-risk breeds have two copies of the FGF4 gene, one copy which produces normal functioning protein and a second truncated copy which produces abnormal versions of the protein. Since FGF4 encodes for a fibroblast growth factor protein that is important in the signaling of bone development, this mutation can lead to a skeletal disorder that afflicts high-risk breeds known as chondrodystrophy. Chondrodystrophy is a skeletal condition where the growth plates develop abnormally, leading to a reduction in long bone length. This results in the characteristic short legs of breeds such as the Dachshund, Beagle, French Bulldog, Pekingese, and Corgi. The chondrodystrophy mutation can also result in premature degeneration and calcification of the intervertebral disc characteristics of IVDD. The chondrodystrophy mutation is interesting in that it has different modes of inheritance for its two phenotypes. The leg height phenotype is inherited in an incomplete dominant manner, meaning that dogs with two copies of the mutated dominant gene will have shorter legs than those with only one copy. In contrast, inheritance of the phenotype for abnormal intervertebral discs follows a more classic autosomal dominant mode in which only one copy of the mutated FGF4 gene is needed to predispose the dog to IVDD. An FGF4 retrogene insertion on chromosome 18 causes chondrodysplasia, a disorder which leads only to the short-legged phenotype without changes in the intervertebral discs. Dogs with mutations on both chromosomes 18 and 12 have a more severe reduction in the length of their legs. Research is currently aimed at investigating how chondrodystrophy and chondrodysplasia may work together to increase the predisposition of IBDD in high-risk breeds. Treatment options depend primarily on severity of symptoms. Conservative treatment options are offered to patients presenting with their first episode and only mild neurologic deficits if owners are unable to afford additional diagnostics or treatment and patients considered high anesthetic risks. These options include cage rest, confinement, and pain medications. A muscle relaxant may also be recommended. Acupuncture therapy may provide additional pain relief for some patients. If or when the patient's condition deteriorates, referral to a neurologist and or surgeon is often necessary to explore further treatment options. Surgical intervention is indicated when compression of the spinal cord occurs and if the patient is extremely painful. A hemilaminectomy is the procedure of choice and involves removing a portion of the side or bottom of the affected vertebrae to expose a vertebral canal. The extruded or ruptured portion of the nucleus pulposus of the intervertebral disc is then removed. The procedure aims at taking pressure off of the spinal cord.
Following surgery, physical therapy is often recommended. This may range from simple exercises that can be done at home to a formal program involving massage and water therapy. Follow-up care depends on the patient's specific needs. The main focus is to help the patient regain the ability to walk and to manage the bladder function. The bladder must be kept empty and medication to simulate urination may be necessary. As for more advanced treatment strategies, targeted gene therapy could soon be available, especially considering recent innovations in modern genomics. At this time, however, more research into the genetic basis of IVDD is necessary as the FGF4 gene was isolated just last year. Genetic testing is available, though it is still costly and not widely accessible for many pet owners. As genetic testing technology advances and improves, however, it will likely become more common. Thus, identification of dogs positive for FGF4 gene mutations could provide a valuable tool in the prevention of IVDD moving forward. Hansen type 1 IVDD is on its own not commonly fatal. Studies have shown that physical therapy, good overall health, and medications also aid in recovery and lifetime management for dogs with this condition. If an owner chooses this treatment option, the upfront cost can be cheaper. However, the likelihood of recurrence is high. With repeated episodes, dogs can experience permanent paralysis and incontinence and may need things such as wheelchairs and more assistance from the owner. The disease can quickly become quite expensive and stressful for everyone involved. Surgical treatment generally has a high success rate and is preferred over medical treatment due to a better recovery and lower incidence of recurrence. Dogs who undergo the surgery may need some physical therapy to be back to normal function. If a dog had a severe case, the prognosis is a little more guarded in whether or not they will regain complete function again. Before a dog is able to have the surgery, it should have an MRI and myelogram done in order to diagnose and confirm the placement and severity of the lesion. Radiographs are not usually sufficient to show the changes seen in IVDD. While surgery has a better prognosis, the cost is high, which tends to defer owners from choosing it. With the identification of the gene that causes Hansen type 1 IVDD, genetic testing could help to eliminate it from the population. IVDD is a disease that generally presents with early onset, and the best recommendation would be not breeding affected animals. The trouble with reducing IVDD in the population occurs when affected individuals have a later onset and breeding has already taken place. A proper diagnosis can be expensive, and the disease can be misdiagnosed. Marley's owner originally brought her to the vet after a traumatic incident falling off the couch. Although she seemed fine immediately after the fall, her owner was concerned because she started acting very strange. She didn't want to eat her food, which is so unlike her. Um, she wouldn't go on walks anymore, especially down steps. She had a lot of trouble going down steps. Um, she would yelp every time I tried picking her up. And I mean, sometimes I'd find her hiding in her crate trembling and just refusing to come out. It was so heartbreaking. I didn't know what to do. Upon physical examination by her vet, Dr. Punnett, it was found that the patient was reactive upon palpation of her thoracolumbar vertebrae. Given Marley's breed and history, Dr. Punnett suspected that she may have intervertebral disc disease. With this being Marley's first episode, Dr. Punnett decided to prescribe carprofen, a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug, and told the owner to keep her cage rested for the next two weeks. She said to bring Marley back if she does not improve or if her symptoms get worse. Two weeks later. Two weeks later, her owner returned frantic. She woke up to Marley lying in a puddle of her own urine, unable to move her back legs. Due to this quick deterioration, Dr. Punnett referred Marley's owner to a nearby neurologist, Dr. Jean Poole. Dr. Poole immediately saw Marley and examined her. She suggested doing an MRI and myelogram in order to pinpoint the location of the spinal cord compression. The MRI showed intervertebral disc extrusion and spinal cord compression at T13L1. The myelogram confirmed these findings. Dr. Poole recommended a hemilaminectomy as soon as possible in order to take the pressure off the spinal cord and hopefully allow Marley to regain control of her hind legs and bladder. 
The current research in chondrodystrophic dogs may prove to be extremely beneficial for humans who develop degenerative disc disease. Problems in the FGF gene family resulting in abnormal FGF signaling have been linked to certain human skeletal dysplasia diseases, or any abnormal development of bone and cartilage that can result in a shortened stature. Achondroplasia, the most common cause of human dwarfism, is one such disease that presents with shortened bones and abnormal vertebrae and intervertebral discs. The gel-like center of the intervertebral disc, or nucleus pulposus, gets replaced with cartilage-producing cells, which puts pressure on the spinal cord. The same is seen in dogs with chondrodystrophy that develop IBDD. When the CFA12 FGF4 gene from canines is compared to the FGF4 gene in humans, the nucleotide sequence is shown to be 91% identical. With this new information, chondrodystrophic dog breeds may prove to be the optimal human-animal model for further research and treatment in human degenerative disc disease.